But is it not true that Falun Gong has become political, like the Chinese government had feared? Well, I'd like to ask, what about Falun Gong is political? Falun Gong has never asked for democracy in China. They've never asked for, to govern China. They've never asked for the communist government to step down. The only thing Falun Gong practitioners want is the end of the persecution and to bring these people responsible to justice. The reality is the Communist Party and their officials are responsible for these mass crimes against humanity. Number one, by their, uh, by their implementing these policies, and number two, by turning their backs and letting these things happen to, to millions of people uh, under their watch. If a man breaks into your house and rapes your mother and butchers your father to death, and you went, it, it, would you not go to the police or government for help? Would this be co considered political? This is exactly what's happening to Falun Gong practitioners all over China. The reports of uh, uh, unlawful arrest, the violence, the beatings, the electrical, the, the electrocutions, the, the 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 rapes, the gang rapes, the forced abortions, uh, the the torture. It's just unbelievable what's happening. But listen to this: in 2006, an independent investigation uncovered that, based on communist government records, that there have been 41,500 organ transplants that were done that could not be verified on where these organs came from. And through investigations, it was uncovered that these organs had come from murdered Falun Gong practitioners who had been in labor camps or jails and blood tested to match organs for transplant tourists. And these organs were then sold on government websites uh, and, and through government uh, uh, agencies for up to $160,000 US. Like These are the issues that Falun Gong practitioners are facing today. Is it not human? to want these crimes stopped. Like if Coca-Cola or IBM were doing these crimes against a group of people and we all rallied to stop it, it wouldn't be seen as political. It's only seen as political because this human rights abuser, this perpetrator is hiding behind the cloak of a, of a government. So for Falun Gong practitioners to want this stopped, it's not political. But I want to go a little bit deeper on this political label because it's very important. For 60 years, the Communist Party has been brainwashing Chinese people to believe that if anybody attacks the Communist Party or criticizes the Communist Party, then, then they're against China and against the Chinese people. So this in turn has created hyper-patriotic Chinese who turn around and attack anybody that the regime labels as political or anti-China. And this has been, it's almost like it's, uh, it was a, it, it was a, an ingenious tool by the communist regime to, uh, to protect them from, uh, uh, from ostracization from others for their crimes. So you have Amnesty International who's seen as an anti-China organization because they're actually uh, trying to stop the torture of Chinese people by the communist regime. But you get the actual Chinese people standing up and attacking Amnesty International attacking the very organization that's trying to protect them because they firmly believe that this organization is political because the regime has labeled it political and anti-China. So this is the kind wow. of mindset you're dealing with inside China today uh, when the regime uh, targets anybody or labels people as political. Well, another label, um, Falun Gong has also been branded as a cult by the mm. Chinese government. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, the Tibetans are terrorists. The, the Uyghurs are uh, criminal. Uh, Falun Gong is a cult. Human rights lawyers who, uh, who help uh, people inside China, uh, their human rights are subversive. The Dalai Lama is a separatist. Um, you know, Amnesty International is, is anti-China. Uh, on and on and on these labels go. You know, at this time in our life, if anybody believes a thing that the Communist Party is saying about anything, then I think it's time you wake up and smell the poison coffee. You know, since 2000, Amnesty International has uh, debunked the cult label on Falun Gong. And just recently, the United Nations uh, wrote an, a, a report that stated, the stigmatization of political against Falun Gong has created a conspiracy theory against the group uh, uh, that has aided in its persecution. Oh. Um, let's look at the facts, though. Since 1994, Falun Gong has been practiced in 60 countries around the world by millions of people, and it's been translated into 13 different languages. Not one person anywhere in the world has ever been 
uh, uh, convicted or uh, arrested for any illegal acts anywhere in the world. Um, all our appeals around the world have been, have been awarded for our rational and peaceful, uh, peacefulness, peaceful appeals. There's no money in, about Falun Gong whatsoever. If you want to join Falun Gong, it's absolutely free. There's no worship or rituals. Um, there's, no, um, uh, there's, no, there's no dogma about it. Uh, Falun Gong teaches you know, to respect your family, to be more responsible as a human being, um, you know, to live by the principles of truth, compassion, and forbearance. From World War II to the Bosnian genocide to Rwanda, the number one weapon in every genocide campaign is, his, is, uh, is propaganda. Propaganda is used to uh, hide a regime's crimes and also to dehumanize the victims so they can be murdered with, with no complications. Joseph Goebbels was Hitler's propaganda minister and Joseph Goebbels stated, if you tell a lie long enough, people will start to believe it. And this principle was used in the elimination of six million people. Uh, in 2003, a Rwandan radio station owner and a Rwandan newspaper owner were both sentenced to life imprisonment uh, for the murder of, uh, of over 800,000 minority Tutsis in the Rwandan genocide through propaganda over their, their medium. And the judge said at the sentencing, uh, without lifting a machete or a firearm, you have caused the deaths of thousands of people. You know, this is, this is the power of propaganda. Pa uh, propaganda is used to hide a regime's crimes, and it's used to de dehumanize a victim so they can be killed by the perpetrator. How else can German human beings murder six million people? How else can Chinese doctors butcher 41,500 Falun Gong practitioners in order to extract their organs for sale? They can do this because they don't look at Falun Gong practitioners as human. They look at them as political or cult members or criminal, you know? And this is the issue and this is what we're, uh, what we're faced with. And this is why uh, we have to be more aware of this propaganda and the, the power that it, it, it brings. So, so it's, it's actually been 12 years since the official crackdown um, and the Chinese government says that they've actually crushed Falun Gong in China. Mm -hmm. Have they? Well, if they have, then why are they still uh, threatening our government officials to remain silent to, f to the Falun Gong appeals? Or why do they keep sending letters to our city officials threatening them that if they have uh, Falun Gong Day, or they write a proclamation for Falun Gong that they will lose business ties in China. It's because uh, Falun Gong has not been eliminated. In 2006, an, a Chinese embassy official stationed in Australia defected from the Chinese embassy uh, because of his conscience, and he stated to media that the Chinese government could not understand the peaceful appeals of Falun Gong to protect their freedom of belief, now they cannot let the international community know what they've done to Falun Gong. This is the issue. The Communist Party is responsible for heinous crimes against humanity. And their number one mandate is to hide these crimes from society so, so they will not be, be uh, uh, brought to justice. This is the issue uh, that, that Falun Gong faces today and why the Communist government is so afraid of the voice of Falun Gong. But uh, don't you think we have to engage China in order to affect change? Mm. Uh, I, th I think that people who say that we have to engage China are either ignorant to the true face of this regime or they're, all, or they're just interested in, in business and they don't really care about human rights. The reality is our government has uh, engaged China for years and still the human rights is deteriorating in China. Um, you cannot engage the, the Chinese government unless you dance the way the Chinese government tells you to dance. They're a bully regime who will not change for anybody. And those who think they will are wasting their time or basically just creating a smoke screen so they can do their business with China uh, uh, you know, without, without worrying about human rights. So I, I guess you don't agree with the scholars who say that human rights are improving in <laughs> China. <laughs> well, I think that these China scholars are basically just uh, China apologists. Um, they, they base the uh, human rights improvement on the economic changes that China has uh, went through recently, which really only affect a very small minority groups uh, in, inside China. 
um, tell the Tibet, ask the Tibetans if Falun, uh, sorry, ask the Tibetans if uh, human rights have improved in China, or ask the Falun Gong practitioners who are still languishing in labor camps today or being cut open for their organs if human rights are uh, proving in China. Or ask the Uyghurs up in the autonomous region who are being ethnically cleansed as we speak if, uh, if, if human rights are improving. Or the Tiananmen Square mothers who 30 years after their, uh, their children were butchered in Tiananmen Square are beaten and tortured uh, in, labor uh, in jails if they uh, appeal for their rights to mourn the death of their children. Uh, ask them if human rights have improved. The reality is human rights have not improved. Hum uh, Chinese, China, Chinese government continues to be the number one human rights abuser in the world. And those who ignore this are basically just implorable. So Joel, what do you feel the answer is to all of this? And where do you see Falun Gong within China in the future? Well, I think the most important thing for us to remember is watch the signs from the Communist Party. They're the biggest liar uh, uh, that, that are in our world today. Uh, you Google China denies and you get over five million hits. Whenever they, something happens in China, they always tell people to stay out of their internal affairs or that this is a political issue or, you know, we deny it. Whenever you hear this, you know exactly that China is lying. And uh, uh, I think that uh, we have to continue to remember this and keep, keep supporting those who are standing up to help uh, the human rights for the Chinese people within China today. Wow. Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us today, Joel.